Welcome to this edition of Phenomenal Health. I'm Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Today we're going to be discussing an incredible new chiropractic technique which is getting phenomenal results with correcting many health conditions. You're really going to love this show. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome to Phenomenal Health. Phenomenal Health is informative and exciting. Phenomenal Health interviews leading experts in all areas in healthcare, so you become a much more informed consumer. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Jeff Hawkins, and you're watching Phenomenal Health. I'm very fortunate to have with me today a true legend in the chiropractic profession, Dr. Ted Korn. Dr. Korn is the founder of Korn Publications, which is the largest supplier of patient education tools for doctors, and he's a developer of the Korn Specific Technique. And he's here today to talk about this great new technique that he has developed and explain how it works. Dr. Korn, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Now, the first thing I want to ask you is, tell us about this technique and actually how you developed it and came about. Well, a lot of people were surprised that I developed the technique. I've been known as a writer and a lecturer and a uh, patient educator. And uh, they were, they're shocked that I come up with a, came up with a technique, and I'm just as shocked as they are. <laughs> uh, it, it's true with all, as is true with real empirical health care, this was discovered by accident. Okay. I was in a very bad accident. I almost lost three of my fingers, still have the scars. Uh, had, I had a bad concussion. And after that, my hands started to go. I started having horrible hand pains all the time. Okay. I, I couldn't use scissors for a while. I couldn't operate my thumbs. Uh, my fingers felt fat, so fat that I couldn't close my hands to make a fist. And uh, had neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. I had a, in addition, I had a 25 year sacral disc problem. All of it was getting worse. And I'd been under chiropractic care for years and years and years, and nothing was helping. Okay. So I was getting desperate. I traveled all around the United States going to the best chiropractors I knew, people who were experts at various techniques, and I started exploring other fields, craniosacral therapy, acupuncture, even physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Nothing helped, or I got very limited results. And I was introduced to an adjusting instrument by a friend of mine, Alan Creed, who practices in Florida, and I started playing and experimenting with it. Mm -hmm. And I realized if I added, and this some chiropractors will know these techniques, some wouldn't. <clears throat> the technique of DNFT, directional non-force technique, that was developed by Dr. Richard Van Rump, which was really developed in the 20s and 30s and 40s, and something called spinal column stressology, developed okay. by Dr. Lowell Ward of Long Beach, California, who I had the fortune to study with, with a number of years, for a number of years. Well, if I added them together and used the suggesting instrument and threw in a little few insights I had from my own experience, it was a marriage made in heaven. Okay. Uh, within a very short time, my hand uh, and arm pain disappeared, and my problems cleared up. My neck problems that were chronic had gone away, and my 25-year sacral, lumbosacral disc problem cleared up in about six weeks. Wow. Well, it would have taken three weeks, but I didn't know what I was doing. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was experimenting on myself. My wife used to have migraines, uh, and since our son Seth was born, uh, which at that time was uh, 11 about 11, 12 years prior. Right. And you know how hard it is? As a doctor, you can't fix your own family. Mm -hmm. And she'd get these migraines, and they would be real bad, and she'd you know, wind up throwing up, and it would be horrible. She didn't even have to take drugs at times. And it was frustrating. The adjustments, mm -hmm. everything I knew it weren't work, it wasn't working. And when I developed this technique, I gave her one adjustment, and she hasn't had a migraine in over two and a half years. Incredible. And you know, working on my family, I started, I looked for, in order to see if this technique worked, the worst patients in the world. So who would be the worst chiropractic patients in the world? Chiropractors. Chiropractors. <laughs> chiropractors who had been adjusted hundreds of times with all kinds of different techniques and were still ill, just like me. Right. So I would do my regular seminars on chiropractic philosophy, research, science, childhood vaccination, and other subjects. And right before the break, I would make an announcement. Anyone who's got a chronic problem, badly subluxated, you've been subluxated a long time, and you're still a mess, see me during the break. Right. Because I've developed this new technique, and I'd like to try it on you, see if it'll help. So I figured one or two people would show up. A long line would form. <laughs> Chiropractors were a mess. They had all these health problems. Many of them were ill from giving adjustments for years. Right. And uh, I, I mean, I know four chiropractors in my area alone that had, have had surgery, hand, shoulder, arm, right. stroke, because of, of the force of, you know, the forceful adjustments. Mm -hmm. So a long line would form, and it seemed like everybody in the group had problems. And I started working on them. 
and to their shock and to mine too in many cases problems that hadn't responded to years of adjustments got better or were dramatically improved in one adjustment. It's so incredible. I, uh, uh, you're not the only one that thought it. Me too. I was shocked. And we're not just talking about pain in the arm, shoulder, hand, back, neck, things like that. Things like insomnia, depression, uh, seizures, right. you know, all kinds of really severe, you know, asthma, allergy, the whole that we see as chiropractors every, you know, day, these chiropractors had and they responded beautifully. But what really told me it, it was working was not just the dramatic results, because I, I don't want something to be a glorified aspirin. Mm -hmm. I want there to be true healing. And the real measure of true healing is a phenomenon known as retracing. Right. Retracing is something many of us have learned in chiropractic school, and it's not just from chiropractic. This is old stuff that the homeopaths codified almost 200 years ago called Herring's Law, or the Law of Cure. But they just codified something that had been observed for thousands of years, and that people heal in certain ways. Mm -hmm. As they heal, old injuries come to the surface, physical and emotional, right. to resolve. And that's known as, we chiropractors call it retracing. Without true retracing, there's no real healing. And I began to see dramatic retracings, retracing in chiropractors and others. Not only physically, but emotionally things would come out, and their problems would go away. And people started holding their adjustments. Weeks, months, even over a year. I remember one child I have, I adjusted him with this technique. It's been a year, he still doesn't need an adjustment. That now chiropractors are saying for the first time since they did HIO work in chiropractic school, patients come in and they don't need adjustments. That's awesome. Yes. So let's get into it then. So explain to people watching exactly what is the, the corn-specific technique. Corn-specific technique is really very <clears throat> simple. It's based on the three C's, challenge, check, and correct. Okay. Challenge, you challenge a body part to see if it's subluxated. Okay. And you can challenge any body part. What does a challenge mean? It means you, you, you slightly, lightly stroke or, or push or pull a part of the body, a vertebra, a cranial bone, and really any part of the structural system or the body can be challenged. And if it does cause a subluxation, even if you push it slightly, microscopically, and it causes a subluxation, the person has more stress. Okay. Well, then the body will react, and we use a biofeedback indicator. Now, a biofeedback indicator, we have many in our body. The more common ones used in chiropractic are known as muscle testing or applied kinesiology, mm -hmm. AK, and that's where your arm goes weak. Right. I don't know if you can see that. It's no, not yeah. a big deal, but the arm goes weak. Right. Another one uh, that Van Rump used was the short leg reflex. Mm -hmm. That's used in activator technique, right. where a person's laying down and you challenge a part of the body and there's a neuromuscular reflex, the, sh the leg will go short right. for a moment and that'll tell you that that part is subluxated or you're causing more, more stress. Well, I learned from Dr. Lowell Ward something called the occipital drop, in which the back of the skull, the occiput, around the mastoid also, will drop slightly on the left when an area is subluxated. Right. When you ch so what you do is you challenge a part of the body, you feel if the occiput is dropped, and then you correct it or adjust it. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole technique. Challenge, check, and correct. Okay. And later on at the end of this, we're going to be showing, you're going to be showing a demonstration on somebody oh, yeah. to really let them see what that's all about. Oh, yeah. And I found that, that I can adjust people or check them in the position of subluxation because subluxations are state-specific or posture-specific. Okay. Dr. Ward got into this in his early research, meaning that you may have a person who's not subluxated standing and severely subluxated sitting. Okay. And uh, let's say if a person was in a car accident, they saw this on x-rays, standing, their, their x-ray films may look fairly good. Sitting, right. they look atrocious. Mm -hmm. So should you adjust them when they're standing or sitting? You should adjust them when they're sitting because right. that's where the subluxation is revealed. Okay. And we found that, you know, people just don't stand and sit for subluxations. A golf swing, a person in a certain position of a golf swing says, it's out here, or right. I feel pain here, or dysfunction, <clears throat> or whatever. Or when a person is turning a certain way. You know that old joke, doctor, it hurts when I do that? Right. And the doctor says, well, don't do don't that. Do that. <laughs> well, when, with this work, you want them to do that. Right. You want them to get in the position of pain, injury, dysfunction, subluxation, and check them in that position. And the posture of subluxation is not only physical, but it's also psychological. Okay. When people are thinking about something that bothers them, maybe the car accident, they will mm -hmm. subluxate in a certain predictable way that we see 
uh, with this technique, and you adjust them while their mind is on that which is causing so a lot of stress. So allows them to think about whatever is right. causing some stress. Yes. Now, Scott Walker, who developed neuroemotional neuro technique, or NET, discovered this uh, a long time ago. A uh, person would, feel, would be adjusted and be fine, and then think about a horrible, stressful incident, and they'd resubluxate. Okay. And he said it was called a neuroemotional complex. It was like a charge. Right. And that emotion and the body were connected. And when they go into that emotion, that memory, it would just throw the body off. So you want to break that connection okay. and, and release that, that charge. And we do that with, with corn-specific technique, KST, okay. which just goes to say that subluxations are physical and, and psychologically state-specific. Now, have you tested this technique then? You know, because I know chiropractors as a whole, we tend to be skeptical, especially mm, with a new technique course. coming out. Mm -hmm. So have you tested it, and what have been what are the results from Not that? Not just on, on chiropractors, the worst patients in the world. Uh, and when I started getting dramatic results, the doctors would just turn to me and say, when are you teaching this? And okay. for the first year and a half or so, I'd say I'm not, which got them upset because they saw these miraculous results. And it's all based on one-on-one -on -one case histories, case studies. Patient, patient, patients getting better one after another. And when I, well, I was really worried about teaching this because I, I thought, well, am I the only one that can get these results? You never know. Maybe these results only work for chiropractors that write patient education literature. Right. You know, <laughs> who are from Brooklyn, you know, and they're wise. And I thought, well, we, we taught, we decided to, uh, I gave a little mini talk in England, actually, about a year, year and a half ago. And some of the doctors picked it up immediately. Mm -hmm. I was really, I mean, I spoke about an hour or so on it. It wasn't part of my scheduled talk. And they picked it up immediately, and I started getting emails from the chiropractors there who were using it, saying, my God, one, a Down syndrome child who has not walked her whole life suddenly starts walking. And wow. I'm getting these, and other people, emotional problems clearing it's incredible. up. incredible. Depression lifts, and fo brain fog and all very powerfully lifts with these adjustments. It's really interesting. I'm still amazed. So I, I taught it just as a sort of a, a little demo in England a little over a year before I started teaching it. And the results so astounded me from the doctors learning it that mm -hmm. I decided, okay, I, I think I can teach this. Right. And we had our first class at the end of May 2005. Okay. And so it's not even, as of this moment, it's not been a year. Now what else have you done that's kind of revealed to you, you know, the power of this technique and how it can actually help people? Well, the, uh, I'm always observing patients. And uh, I realized using Van Rump's initial work that you could adjust discs with this. Okay. So people with hot discs who have been to other chiropractors or chiropractors themselves who ultimately are thinking, oh my God, I'll need surgery, you can adjust the disc itself and release it. Okay. So that, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, also, you can uh, check the cranial bones. And right. Van Rump said a long time ago, you know, he started his work in the 20s and 30s and 40s. And he was actually research director of the sacral occipital technique before mm -hmm. he developed, uh, or perhaps concurrently with, uh, with uh, Van Rump's work, DNFT. Okay. And he said, if the cranials are not adjusted, the cervicals won't hold. If the ribs are not aligned, the thoracics won't hold. And I found that to be true. I mean, how frustrating is it? You can lay a patient down on the table three times a week, crunch, 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 three times a week, the same areas. Mm -hmm. That's not healing. You're releasing stress patterns, yes. It's good, yes. But you're not healing because if they were really getting better, they shouldn't need you so much. Right. And with this work, after you work on them, the first adjustment, the next time you see them, they are better. There's 90% less subluxations. Old stuff comes to the surface. After you've seen them a few times, you don't need to see patients very much. In fact, I've never had the, it before in my life where I now I can say to a patient, okay, you're fine. Uh, call me uh, you know, in a few months when you feel like it. You'll know when you're subluxated most of the time. Right. Uh, this, uh, as I said, has shocked me as much as it perhaps so uh, shocked of, anyone. What other kind of things have you seen unusual as far as cases and problems that you've actually corrected, different types of conditions? Well, you know, chiropractic isn't really condition-oriented. But so, uh, I can perhaps read some of the case, uh, some of the letters I got from chiropractors. That would perhaps be uh, the best way to explain it. Because I can say, well, this is great all the time. But it's right. really the doctors that got the results. And then they write to me. And I've got hundreds now of uh, letters telling me. And now I'm getting letters from patients as well saying, 
my God, this is incredible. I've got to tell all my friends about this. I've been going to chiropractors for years. I've never seen these kind of results. Right. I did not intend for this even to exist. It was, I feel like it was just, I was lucky. It just okay. sort of happened uh, out of terrible frustration and, and a sense of hopelessness. And I just kept searching, right. and it just fell in my lap one day. Okay, so near, near the end of our, our talk, then I'll go ahead and give you a chance to grab some and read some of the testimonies from doctors. Mm -hmm. I know those are very powerful. Oh, I'm thinking of a couple of things I can tell you about. Okay, go we ahead. We found uh, something called a hump pattern. Now, you know some people, the back of their necks, they have a hump. Right. And it looks terrible. And they feel that they'll turn into little bent over men and women. And right. it's a good chance they will, unless it's corrected. Mm -hmm. There's no chiropractic technique that can correct it. We discovered how to fix it. People with bad humps, within a few weeks or months, they don't have it anymore. And these humps are dangerous because they put pressure on the heart, lungs, and thyroid. Mm -hmm. So you want to correct it. Right after you correct it, they can breathe better, they feel better. We found a, a panic pattern. When a person is, is sort of freaked out sometimes and they don't let it go, they're still in a slight state of stress, a hypervigilant state. Too much stress hormones are going, and you know, an excess of stress hormones is common in society today, and it's been known to cause low immune function, sexual disorders, emotional problems, all because their, their, their hormones, their glands, their adrenals are getting blown away. They're, they're okay. just exhausted. And it turns out that an interesting thing happens when we're scared. You know when a dog is scared, what it does with its tail? Right. Puts it between, between its uh -huh. legs and runs away. Well, humans do the same thing. We put our tailbones, our coccyx, between our legs. The coccyx goes anterior. Coccyx is the tip of the tailbone, tip, tip of the spine, at the, right under the sacrum, goes anterior. Why? What's the point? We don't have a tail sticking out that an animal's going to bite off. Why would our tailbones also go anterior? Well, right. it turns out that the meninges that cover the brain and spinal cord go all the way down and attach to the tip of the tailbone, the coccyx. When okay. the coccyx goes anterior, it tightens everything. Right. The meninges tighten, and we're girded for battle. Okay. Also, our chest raises up, our, our sternum raises up, to probably to protect our heart and lungs. Sometimes mm -hmm. our, our larynx locks up, and our pubic bones lock up. That's a little more rare, but it does happen. Okay. And we're in fight or flight, mm -hmm. and that's okay. That's part. That's a, a natural defense. But unless it releases, we're always in fight or flight, and our, we'll never be healthy. So we found a very quick, simple way to locate the panic pattern and correct it. And another pattern is the sphenoid pattern. And I'll use this. This is a human, a representation of a human <coughs> skull. And the different colors represent the different cranial bones. Okay. Uh, new studies show what, inanimate, what cranial doctors have known for decades and longer that the cranial bones move. And one of the more important bones is the yellow one. And it's right behind the eye and it's called the sphenoid. You have one, you have the same sphenoid on both sides because the sphenoid wraps around the bottom of the skull. Let me do it from this way. I'll take the, the jaw off. It's easier. The sphenoid is called the butterfly. That's what it means in Greek, butterfly. Okay. And it looks like a butterfly. It has two big wings here. Those are the wings that touch behind your eyes. And in the center is a, a sort of like a little indentation. And that's mm -hmm. called the cella tersica, or, or that's where the pituitary sits. Right. When the sphenoid is out of position, you can get a number of problems. Uh, one is migraines. In okay. fact, you see the yellow bone, the sphenoid, makes up part of the eye socket. Okay. And people that have headaches or migraines coming from their eyes, it's the sphenoid that's out. Almost always, sphenoid is out. When the sphenoid is out of place, it can also cause hormonal problems. No problem there because the pituitary sits in it, which controls our hormones. And the sphenoid's out of place also. Vision problems, brain fog, depression uh, have all been related to sphenoid. Uh, uh, needing adjustment. adjustment. Okay. And when the sphenoid is properly adjusted, people respond beautifully. Their eyes, their vision clears, they feel happier. Excellent. It's, yeah, this adjustment has had very powerful effects, not only physically, but emotionally. Okay. You're correcting the cranial bones, all of them, and we teach that in our seminars. How to adjust all the cranial bones very quickly and easily. It doesn't take long. And then the whole body as well. Okay, so Dr. Korn, tell us how Korn's specific technique is different than other techniques that are out there now. Good question. You can very quickly and easily find out if any part of the body and structural system is subluxated and correct it very quickly. Okay. Uh, in addition, you can adjust yourself, which no other technique has as right. far as I know. Also, you don't need a table. Uh, you can adjust people standing, sitting, or position of injury. 
There, occasionally, you may need to check them lying down. You can do that on anything. You don't need a table. You don't need an x-ray. It's probably the, the perfect technique for a struggling new doctor who doesn't have much funds. But I'm not a struggling doctor, and, but I still find it very convenient and easy to use. Right. And you find that patients love it. Okay. Uh, one chiropractor wrote to me, says, you know, you get patients better quickly. You don't see them as much, but boy, do they refer. Right. And they love it. We have doctors that have gone from mostly insurance to mostly cash, and so the patients love it, and they have no qualms about paying because they're seeing results almost always from the very first visit. Wow. See dramatic changes. Now, is this a hard technique to learn? You know, no, for some reason, never done it. Not at all. In fact, when we teach the technique during the first few hours, doctors can start working on each other and themselves. We have doctors who that night, they've gone into their rooms and checked and adjusted themselves or, or their friends, or have gone home if they live locally and wind up working on the whole family. The, f the night of the first seminar, okay. uh, the first night of the seminar, and uh, Monday morning, they're ready to go. So no. it's not difficult to learn. It's a very simple technique, but as with anything, you get, you know, it's new concepts, new ideas. Right. And people need uh, sometimes to switch gears in how they think about the body. Right. So it's an easy technique. Uh, it's very easy on a doctor's body because we use an adjusting instrument, and I prefer the arthrostem. Uh, it's easy on your hands and shoulders okay. and back. Some doctors come to the seminars just because their bodies are shot from doing forceful adjustments. And my, most of my career, I, I use my hands. Mm -hmm. This instrument is an extension of your hands, but it's incredibly specific. So you need very little force. So that's another question then. Is, is there healing done on the doctor as well as the patient using this technique? Yes. Yeah. Doctor can heal themselves and as well as the patient. Excuse me. As well as the patients. And also, uh, because it's light force, there's no cracking, twisting, uh, bending. I had one chiropractor who used to say to me, Ted, uh, I, need a, I like a good crack. Patients like a good crack. Good, that's what it's about, getting a good crack. It feels wonderful. So uh, shortly thereafter, he, started, he needed hand surgery because he was cracking people all the time, and, and he hurt himself. Right. And while he was you know, recuperating, he couldn't practice the way he had been, and that would be a severe loss of income. So he got the arthrostim instrument, and he started using that. And he started adjusting. He loved the results. And the patients said things to him that shocked him. They'd say, I'm so glad you're not cracking me. And it, w it was a shock to him. They didn't right. want to tell him. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, doctors that are no longer doing the cracking or forceful adjustments are starting to see more children coming into their practice, more infants and babies. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the universe is letting them in now. Right. So you, doctors are surprised by this, how, how well the patients like it a lot. Infants love it. They even smile when they're being worked on. Now, what do you say to some doctors who are sort of skeptical about maybe learning a new technique and, oh, I'm not sure if this is going to work, it's just him trying to sell me on something. What do you say to doctors like that? Doctors have to be open. You know, if there's a better way to do something, I would hope that they'd be open and investigate it. Uh, there's advantages, and I, I've, you know, enunciated what they are. There are others as well. But these are main ones, plus the fact that you can adjust yourself. I, I know that whenever I ask in my lectures, do any of you know people that you wouldn't want to touch you? <laughs> Everybody nods <laughs> their heads and right. shakes. And maybe you live in, their area, in an area where the doctors are not that good, and mm -hmm. you want to adjust yourself. You can, and it's simple, and you'll get a better adjustment. Probably the best thing to say to the chiropractors uh, is you'll be probably the best chiropractor in your whole area. Now, do you have some testimonies now that you want to read from some yeah. doctors who have sent in some neat case studies? Oh, yeah, doctors have been sending me these constantly. Here's one. Uh, Dr. Ralph Mitchell from England, uh, I checked myself when I got home. My headache went away immediately and I slept like a log that night. Today I've used KST in all my patients. They love it. It's a fantastic technique. This is the happiest I've ever been at work. I feel ready to look at just about anything that I could help and that I could help just about anyone. And this was after the first, this the first day of practice. First, wow. after the, another one. This doctor writes, another great day at the office with KST. The patients really do enjoy it. 75% reduction in rheumatoid pain, immediate chronic low back pain relief, disc relief, and, and on and on. A new patient who returned the next day so excited, she told everyone at her office she was pain-free, slept through the night for the first time in years, and could breathe freely. I didn't even know about that problem. I said I forgot to tell her about retracing in dreams, and her jaw dropped, and she described a full night of vivid past trauma and old boyfriend dreams. It's from Don Piccoli, D.C. 
So, oh, and then he continues. My first patient after the seminar was my associate with her chronic migraines. At times she's had to leave the office because of them. Isn't that a drag in a chiropractic office? Uh, a few cranial and upper cervical adjustments and the migraine was gone immediately. That never happened before. Of course I adjusted myself, my family, my cat. Uh, here's one from a skeptic. I've seen this patient for a year. He came in this morning and said, yesterday is the first time I walked out of your office pain free. Wow. I was skeptical reading all your testimonials, but the results convinced me. If you would have told me this technique was this powerful, I would not have believed you. Your technique has changed everything. Thank you very, very much, John Collins, DC. When you start, he adds, PS, when you start a new patient off with KST, they just think that all chiropractic has such instant results. I used to cringe a bit when difficult cases would come in. Now it's bring them on. The, be the tougher, the better. <laughs> uh, Dr. Bruce King in Texas, we're getting so used to superior results that it just seems normal now. Many of the chronic patients that had reached a plateau in their care are now making significant forward progress. Retracing is a major issue now, which is a good, a good issue right. to have. Uh, that was uh, David Lundquist, DC. Patient woke up with blurred vision in one eye and had made an appointment with the ophthalmologist. I adjusted the sphenoid. Blurry vision went away immediately. He canceled his other appointment. Adjusted a lady complaining of an earache for two weeks. Pain relieved immediately after temporal and TMJ cleared. Uh, Rick Mbanta, DC. Six-month-old boy with upper GI problems, blood in stool, inconsolable crying, etc. Had been through the medical ringer with diagnostic testing, meds, and discussing surgery. The at her wit's end mother brought him in as a last resort. I found some mid and lower thoracics as well as sacrum and adjusted him with the arthrostem. The child hasn't had any symptoms since his first adjustment. I checked him yesterday and today and he only needed one or two thoracics adjusted. Uh, this is from Pete Cohen, DC. New patient, Mayo Clinic, told her it was in her head. I told her that they were right. They just didn't know where in her head. <laughs> she came in with headaches, numbness, and tingling in her fingers, low back pain, arthritis, asthma, neck pain, fatigue, and lack of concentration. Actually, there was much more, but that's enough for now. When she left, her posture was greatly improved. All outward signs and symptoms were gone. Her eyes were the same size they weren't before. She and those that brought her were floored. Wow. So this is just some of them. I, I can go on and on. I just want to do one more. This is from... Uh, Russ Smith, it's really cool. A six-month-old girl who screamed any time her feet touched the ground or someone touched her feet. Her feet were stone cold. The baby w had not begun scooting or crawling yet. I used KSD on the baby Monday. Wednesday, the mother came in worshiping the ground I walk on. The baby's feet are warm and pink. She likes to stand on her feet and puts them down on the ground, started scooting, and began the early phases of crawling, which she had not done to date. Wow. So these are the kind of things that it's doctors who've been in practice for many years and know stuff, and many of them are excellent doctors. Now, all these chronic people that they had their, they're pulling their hair out about are starting right. to get incredible responses. And you feel, and you really do, as Dr. Mitchell had said uh, earlier, you really do like, feel like you can handle anything. Right. Bring them on, the tougher the better. And because the doctors are now detectives. You're searching. You're not just mm -hmm. doing the same old thing with everybody. You're searching. You're ser right. You know that there's a problem. You keep looking. You keep asking. And you discover stuff. And now many of the doctors that took the seminars are getting back to us, getting, putting stuff on the forum, uh, on the website, and writing to me and teaching me things that they've seen. That's great. So it's a great thing because and we're all learning together. And the technique has developed beautifully and is continuing to grow. Popula popularity is, is growing greatly with it. Now we're almost out of time, so why don't you tell us, for people watching right now, how can they can learn more information about how to maybe attend one of your seminars so they can come and learn this in person from you? Just go to tedcorinseminars.com or call us at 800-537-3001. We initially were only going to have the seminars in Pennsylvania, and we actually started taking it on the road. So uh, call us or go on the website, and you can register that way, or just uh, let us know if you have any questions. Great. Thanks, Ted, for being on the show. I appreciate it. We come back on in the future. I'd love it. Thanks, Thank you. Ted. Thanks.